Overall VFX Supervisor Peter Chang talks Previs, Tecvis, Drones and Chinese Sound Stages on Steven Deck Knight's sequel to Guillermo del Toro's 2013 Sci Adventure Romp. Pacific Rim Uprising hits theaters today, Universal Pictures, Legendary Pictures and director Stephen Deck Knight's campy, often funny action-packed sequel to Pacific Rim, Guillermo del Toro's 2013 sci-fi adventure romp that introduced film audiences around the world to the VFX-driven spectacle of giant robot kaiju hand-to-hand -hand combat. Set 10 years after the final battles of first film's war between 250 feet tall, human-piloted robot warriors known as Yagers and the alien-engineered giant kaiju monsters rising from deep beneath the Pacific Ocean, Pacific Rim. Uprising pits two scientific geniuses, once colleagues, against one another, with a fiercely driven Chinese megacorporate CEO and a new group of pilots thrown in, who all defy great odds to heroically save humanity once again. Overall VFX supervisor Peter Chang managed an ensemble of visualization and visual effects studios that produced almost 1,600 VFX shots, including newly designed Yagers and Kaiju monsters as well as an enormous number of robot monster battles and massive environmental destruction. On had a chance to speak with Chang about his work on the film, including the extensive use of Previs as well as live-action shots to give the CG animation a more real-world physically grounded look. The interview has been edited for length and clarity. Peter Chang, I joined the project quite late, literally two weeks before the start of principal photography. There was a budgetary move towards trying to make the numbers work because obviously, with all things these days, the film was greenlit, and then the appetite for visual effects always gets bigger than the actual budget. I took over from a chap named Jim Burney. They'd already done a lot of preface with the third floor, Halon and an Australian company, Day for Night, under Andreas Heichel. I think he's known by his colleagues as Chop. These three companies were working away on various sequences. The production already had a number of houses in place to do the work, but because of Brexit and the dollar gaining so much strength against the pound, everything in the UK became that much cheaper. That gave the UK an advantage over some of the American companies where the work was supposed to go to. ILM I think was down to do some of the work. I think Sony was as well as Method. But when the pound became much stronger, as with all films these days, they, the producers, chase the rebate, they chase the exchange rate to maximize the dollars in getting images on the screen. That meant DNEG became a viable option as the principal house. I was asked to supervise the show and became overall supervisor. I flew straight to Australia and met with Stephen Knight, the film's director, and the team. I'd worked with Dan Mindel, the film's director of photography, before. It's the first time I'd worked with the production designer, Stefan Dagent. I went with my VFX producer, Teresa Corrao, who I also was working with for the first time. It's always good to have an independent, visual effects producer on so there's no conflict of interest. When I arrived, there was a lot of talk about how some sequences needed just a little bit more polish. First of all, I obviously didn't want to upset the way in which things were being done. They'd already made a lot of decisions about how to shoot certain things. My attitude was very much one of trying to fit in, learning where the problems were and trying to help those areas. One of the main areas was action sequences. I immediately started to storyboard them, come up with ideas about how I saw things, coming in with fresh eyes. Steven embraced that, because immediately, I could see he really liked some of my ideas. It was a process of, first, presenting to Steven and then presenting to Legendary, making sure they were happy with changes that affected production. Stephen had pointed out that Guillermo del Toro, who wrote and produced Pacific Rim, staged most of his action at night, with rain and obviously, lighting. There are a lot of CG cheats you can do, in a night scene, because you can create any light source you like and justify it by the environment that you're in. Because of that, Legendary and Stephen made the conscious decision that we're going to do most of the action in daytime. That, in itself, presents a lot of problems. Straight away, I sort of said, look, we're going to shoot a plate for every single visual effects shot, even though I know we're not going to use them all the time. There's a lot of damage to the city, a lot of futuristic look to the city that needs to be augmented, there'll be a tipping point on a VFX plate, where it's deemed more economical to do it all CG rather than replace the buildings that exist in the plate. We set about looking at all the different locations where we needed to shoot. Mega Tokyo, at the end of the film, that, in itself, was a design challenge. We couldn't really shoot in Tokyo because of limitations of the street size. In order to get a Jaeger to run down the street, we needed a 70-foot-wide boulevard. 
So, there was a conscious decision to find locations that we could augment into Mega Tokyo. One of the other aspects was the camera work. In Tokyo, there's a limitation where helicopters are not allowed to fly below 500 feet in the city. A crane can go up to 100 feet but is limited in its movement. In order to do the physical moves for the plates, we used a lot of drones. There is a fantastic company in Australia called XM2, run by Stephen O, that provided drones for us. They had a mini Alexa on top of a drone, which would fill the gap between 50 feet and 500 feet. With 240 foot tall Yagers and a 300 foot tall Kaiju, it all just all fit perfectly with the Previs. In Previs, as you know, you can cheat speeds and cameras to move incredibly fast. It really grounded us having to try and shoot a physical plate in order to represent a previs. We found that certain shots were just impossible in terms of